there have been challenges and, and mistakes made over nine years. Mm -hmm. uh, you reflect on some of your successes there and, and what you see is what you want to leave and, and, and make, an, uh, make an impact on the country through your decision making. What do you see as, ah, if I, if I could have that one back, I would do it differently mm -hmm. the next time? Electoral reform. Ah, yeah, music to my ears. Oh, you you I mean, say that just for me, right? I, I don't say that just for you. But actually, in one sense, I do say it just for you because I know in just about any other interview... I was going to raise it. Any other interview, the interviewer's eyes glaze over and go, okay, yeah, but give me something real that you regret, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. I say, no, 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 this is real. For me, I look at where the world is going and where polarization has happened and where excesses of populism have been able to come in. And the winner-take-all version of first-past-the-post that we have right now, where you can get elected as the MP for 100% of people in your riding with 30 you know, thirty-two percent of the vote, if, if it's properly divided, if it's divided yeah, amongst yeah. other parties, is not just devaluing the votes of so many others, but it's giving you a false sense of you know, being the only legitimate voice for your community. And I, if I could do things differently, I don't know exactly how I would have, but I certainly would have done things differently around electoral reform to try and make sure that we are not going to be fighting this next election under first past the post again. Yeah, this easily in nine years, the worst day I had as a, as a liberal caucus member was the day we broke that promise. I, it looked... Uh, I mean, there's a, there's a, it looked a little bit cynical to say, oh, we couldn't, we can't figure out a path. And so we're going to, you know, just burn it to the ground, never talk about it again. Uh, that's probably not how you would feel about it. I made two, two big mistakes on this one. The first one, um, because of some very strong voices in my caucus who were very, very clear that they wanted to at least be able to make an argument for proportional representation, which yeah. which I I feel very very strongly would be a mistake for Canada. Uh, I left the door open to proportional representation instead of ranked ballot, even within my own team, and that made made a whole bunch of people who heard me say last election is first past the post translate that into he's going to bring in proportional representation which i was not which i never was going to and i wasn't clear enough on that we can have yeah. the argument about make it wasn't but it want. wasn't uh so it wasn't last election on our first past the post it was make every vote count make every vote count no is, no the vote language was, you know i know but make every vote count was in our um was in our platform make every vote count was language lifted a little bit from fair vote so that it was like a few different ways that it was it was like oh, yeah no 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 and that know. was and that was deliberately that people wanted to, yeah, to yeah, make yeah, sure yeah, that yeah. we Open, were bringing in the, yeah, the fair yeah, vote yeah, people sure. and i even though i had been very clear with caucus and at, at the liberal convention in 2012 how much i am opposed to the idea of proportional representation um i couldn't like I, it, it was something that i had to leave a little bit of a door open to and unfortunately because of that it got further, and when people realized, no, I was not going to let that let move forward. Yeah, if you were never going to go there from the get go. I could have then... been clearer on that because I mean, we could talk about why yeah, yeah, yeah. why why I think proportional representation is 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 dangerous for the country, and it, it doesn't have to do with, as much with sort of um, augmenting fringe voices, although that is is one of the arguments that I think is is interesting. The big one is, I am really worried about decoupling members of parliament in the house from a community of people who both voted for them and didn't vote for them yeah, yeah. that they oh, have if, to serve. If, yeah yeah I, I don't you think know? anyone i don't think any advocate in canada is arguing for doing away with uh any advocate for more proportional systems advocates for doing away with local representation uh, but but uh, then you also give people who got elected because they were on a party list and you have mps who owe their you, existence yeah. as mps to a political party <laughs> as opposed to specific canadians so yeah. anyway but i i would I, you can do open list but, but, but yeah i said well, two I things yeah, i said yeah. two things on that what's, what's the second one the, the first one <laughs> was i wasn't clear enough that i have real in a nerdy electoral I know, well, yeah, we knew this was going here because we're both total yeah, nerds yeah, about yeah, it yeah, right true true the second one is um me not using my majority to bring in um, to bring in the model that I wanted. 
Right. Right? Because I could, I believe in rank ballot. I think that if you give people choices to rank one, two, three, uh, parties will try to pitch to be people's second or even third choice. Uh, and that brings in more cooperation and overlap between political parties in a way that counters anyone who is aggressively trying to polarize. That's why I love rank ballot. I think I think it's also an easy switch where people get to write yeah, one, yeah, two, yeah. three. Yeah. Uh, because it doesn't change the writings, doesn't change any doesn't even change the ballots. You just, you know, instead of an X you put uh, one, two, three, four, five, whatever. Um, but the consequences of changing our electoral system are so significant. It's not like bringing in a budget or a policy that you don't like that you can then vote out the next election. When you change the way people are elected, it becomes really hard to change it because by definition, whoever won under that new system likes that system a lot. Yeah. And, and that idea of needing consensus across uh, and not having it was why I chose to say, okay, I'm not going to risk an irreversible change just to fulfill a promise I made to, to change this. And that was, it was, it was a difficult day for you. It was a gut wrenching day for me to decide that I couldn't move forward on something that might hurt Canada in the long term and be irreversible without having a broader level of support in the house.